Uh, my name is Richard McFarlane. I'm the sixth generation McFarlane here at Wellington Lodge. Uh, we, my ancestors arrived here in uh, 1839 and about six years later moved down here to Tail and Bend at the end of the Murray River on the banks of Lake Alexandrina. And I suppose we got into this um, regenerative style agriculture from a selfish point of view where we were looking for more money, less risk, uh, and an easier way of doing farming. Uh, as it turned out, it became a lot less risky, a lot more profitable, and became a fun way of farming. Uh, it's, it's nice to look out over your landscape and see it improving. It's nice to feel that you're working for the environment. I suppose you can, you can be part of the problem, or you can try and be part of the solution. So our enterprise now is, a, is about 50% breeders, uh, with, which is a Team Tamania herd, and we're also about 50% traders uh, in an average year. And it's designed that way to create flexibility for us so that we can manage our feed and never really ever run out of feed and not need any to be brought into the farm to feed our animals. Um, so the way it works is that we run two seasons. One's an open season, which is when everything's growing and everything's, you know, the grass is green. And then we, then we get into the closed season. And the closed season is when all of the annual grasses have dried off uh, and, you know, it's basically summertime. Uh, we manage them completely differently. One, when everything's growing, that's when we're trying to really get some action going into the soil. We run uh, a priority graze system and a Sabbath system so that we pick one paddock and really graze it heavily. And then we pick it, and the, and the paddock at the end of the cycle, generally is we call the Sabbath paddock, which we don't graze for 12 months. And uh, these totally different styles of management of those two paddocks uh, is what is creating change for us. We're not doing the same thing to the paddock every year by just running a few cows around. So what we're achieving from that is we're able to promote the growth of the perennials. So with the priority graze paddock, we, we graze it right down hard and then we walk away from it. And as soon as it's about a couple of inches high, we call it toe height, we come back to that paddock and give it another graze. And that is to keep the, keep the canopy low, let as much sunlight get into those little plants as possible, generate uh, germination of perennial grasses that are there. Uh, so the idea of the, the priority graze is to, is to end up with more perennial grasses than when we started and also to try and keep that paddock green for longer throughout the year. Uh, and the Sabbath paddock is designed for those to give those plants that have been established in that priority graze period a real break. So that's, that's what we do in the open season. Then we move to the closed season and the closed season is when we can look out in our paddocks and we know how much feed's there. And we know pretty much, unless we get a lot of rain through the summer, we're not gonna get much more feed than that. So we can go and calculate and assess exactly how much feed there. We know how many animals we've got. And so we can, we can decide how many animals we need to, need to sell and when in order to make that feed survive until the next uh, open season. This, this allows us to be very flexible. It, it allows us to be very risk-free. We, the first p things we sell down obviously are our trading cattle that we've bought in uh, and, and the idea is to make sure that we are never overgrazing the farm with our breeders. So the trading cattle in a bad year obviously would go very early on in the piece but in a good year the trading cattle would last a lot longer through into the open season. So yeah, we just pulled up here. I just noticed there's a nice little perennial grass there. Um, but what we're looking for in this soil is what we can notice is there's a distinct layer through there of compaction and another one probably down here. But as, as we sort of let, the, let it disturb itself a bit, you can see a color change too here. I mean, this is where all the life is happening. But what we're looking for is see these cracks going down. I and mean, these are the compaction layers of you know, poor 
poor management and poor uh, history. But what we want to see is these things breaking up like this. So we, we can see that the, 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 the movement is coming down. And we want <coughs> what we want to do essentially is to grow this, this section of soil. We want to grow that down here and um, you know, do it as fast as we can. The benefits we've been seeing, I mean, we've been doing this since about 2013, it's now 2021, and we have seen large numbers of perennial plants come back into, into our paddocks, uh, and that's without seeding them. That's without fertiliser and without any chemicals. We're seeing paddocks stay greener for longer, greening up earlier than surrounding paddocks. And to me, regenerative agriculture, I think is going to go really well to combating climate change. And to be part of that and feel part of that is really encouraging. But also to be able to do it in a profitable and risk-free uh, method. It just makes farming so much more fun.